Um, well, I'm delighted to say that the director and star of Metro Manila, Sean Ellis and Jake Macapagal, are uh, joining Hi, me now. Right. Yeah. Thanks very much for your time, guys. Um, I'll just start off by asking you, uh, firstly, Sean, there seems to be a trend of uh, English directors going abroad to make movies now. What drew you to the Philippines and ultimately the story of Metro Manila? Um, I was in the Philippines on holiday in 2007 and, uh, and, I, and I just was sort of bowled over by the sort of energy and the, the sort of vibrance of the city and it was also a city that I hadn't really seen on the big screen so um, it's very exciting in that sense and then um, I happened to witness um, two armoured truck drivers having an argument on the street which ended with one of them kicking the truck and then driving off and I remember thinking I wonder what they were arguing about and it was pretty much the seed for the, for the, for the, for the movie. Oh, amazing. Um, Jake, how did you come across Sean and uh, land the role of Oscar? He, well, we have a common friend. Uh, I work in the Philippine independent cinema. I'm, I'm, I'm involved in that, in that part. And uh, I was introduced to Sean. But I was going to liaise between Sean and finding actors, production people, and uh, line producers and all, stuff like that. And but at the same time, when, when, when I met him, I, I, I was reading the character Breakdown and uh, mm. <laughs> I was wishing that he'd offer me the role, give me the chance of, to have a reading with him. And, uh, but I did uh, while uh, we were looking for the character or the character of Mai in the, in the, in the process. And after the, f the reading, about a, a week after, he offered me the role. Um, Oscar is one of the most likeable and sympathetic characters that definitely I've seen this year and it's really nice to have a, a protagonist who's just a genuinely really nice guy, a good man. Um, how did the character evolve and um, how, is, how much of you is there in the character, if any? Yeah, um, uh, yeah, it's, yeah but, um, he's a, a, a lot of it, I think, in, in Everyone has that that that, that side of uh, that that side that character of Oscar inside them, but I was really more looking at my brother. Oscar is like my brother. The, the the one that comes after me. He's he's very uh, opposite me. Just just very just sure of himself and very quiet and just just and uh, I said when I'm looking for the character, all all I had to do was like. Oh well, my brother is this way, and he's always just been very, very, very calm and and very you know in a naive way, but also I admire that character of him, mm. so I base that character of my brother. Yeah, I think Oscar's a you know Oscar when we when we wrote Oscar was very much um, he was an everyman, but at the same time he was he was definitely somebody that um, I sort of aspired to be more like because I think he's yeah. you know he's he's very um, he's very uh, unjaded and and doesn't he's not cynical in any way yeah. um, realizes that there's you know there's a there's a lot that's going to get uh, you know uh, a lot of stuff he knows rolls downhill because he's been in the army so he knows the direction of stuff but I think he's got an intelligence that in the end you. You have a newfound respect for him because he planned something that you hopefully didn't see coming, and uh, and and with that, and and the sacrifice of the stuff that he makes, I think it it it, it you know you, you find a respect for that character, and that was that was what I was trying to achieve with with him. Okay, um, and it would be easy for him to be cynical in this quite unforgiving world. As a foreigner making a film in the Philippines, was it important to you to show? the beauty and the richness of the country as well as the more like hostile elements of downtown metro manila yeah i mean yeah. Like, there's a yeah i mean it's like it's difficult because it's not you know i'm not making a film for the tourist board you know i'm mm -hmm. making yeah. a film so it's kind of like you know people say yeah but it shows the negative side of the philippines and it's like well yeah but uh you know what about english you know, kitchen sink dramas or gangster films. What what do they say about <laughs> what do they say about England? It's it's just a film. It's just part where you find yeah. your story. And I think um, you know, a, a great story comes from from drama, and drama comes from conflict. So you have to really find these corners of great conflict to get the drama in order to get the great story. So it's it just happens to be in some very difficult situations and difficult places that the Philippines have. Mm. Right. Right. 
Um, so have you shown the film in the Philippines? How's it gone down over there, if you have? Yeah, we have. Pretty much uh, with family, you have great support. And, mm-hmm. You know, they're like cheering after you. But uh, we had a media screening about two weeks ago. And the media, uh, from the tabloid to the mainstream media, to the journalists and the bloggers, really loved it. They were emotionally involved. And I know when I came up to the theater, I saw their eyes really crying and genuinely people were just touched and moved with the film mm. I think it's a good mix because you've yeah. got you know um, it, it really in that sense uh, you know the, the one one you know it's a, it's a British film but it's it's a Filipino story and yet it's a universal theme and so um, I think that combination um, speaks to a lot of people yes it's yeah. very much um, but they couldn't exist, one couldn't exist without the other. It was, you know, I couldn't mm-hmm. have made it without um, the actors that I had and, and the, the locations that were available. And, and yeah, at the same time, it wouldn't have been possible if Sean wasn't there. So it's a complete mm. uh, morphing. So what were some of the challenges of, of shooting in somewhere like Metro Manila? Uh, physically, the heat for me was a big one because I was, I was mm. operating a, a lot of the time, so it was... I remember uh, pretty much taking three T-shirts to work every morning and sweating through all of yeah. them. <laughs> yeah. And the traffic. The traffic yeah. was horrendous, yeah. So you had to yeah. allow at least Noise two hours. Noise pollution is also something that you, you, you were very aware of. You know, but, uh, but mm. When you're recording sound and yeah. it's, a, it's a city that's it's so bustling. loud, it it's can be really you know, difficult in that sense. But, um, you know, it was a very much run and gun movie. We, you know, a lot of it was shot sort of on the fly, and and mm. um, we 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 were a very small crew, which enabled us to sort of move very fast and and in two vans. So we would pretty much would rock up to locations mm-hmm. and yeah. sort of. And the know, farthest one was the the one the eighteen hour drive to the mountain. But now he was tough. Yeah, yeah. the yeah. mountain <laughs> province was tough. Yeah. It was an eighteen hour drive, and Oof. yeah, and I, I, the way that the Filipinos drive is is they kind of drive, <laughs> they drive like they walk. If they see <laughs> a space, they just go for it. And um, yeah. and if they're there, you have to give way. And and so I I did believe actually that we were never going to make it alive to Banal. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, that was a tough journey. And then coming down, we had the longest tracking. Uh, yeah, well, we had we actually travelled in the jeepney on the way back. So yeah, he had <laughs> me, you know, we had eighteen down. hours to do the filming of the jeepney sequence on the way back. So I do think it's probably the longest travelling short <laughs> <laughs> that's ever been done. But 